Hi, I'm Karen, founder and skipper of Sporting Sheroes, an organisation that helps women in sport raise their profile and develop really great sponsorship packages. This is the Data Talks Sports CDP Crash Course Podcast. Data Talks makes it easy for sports organisations to sell more tickets and merchandise and negotiate sponsorship agreements of higher value. Our community, Women in Sport Beyond the Hashtag, is for everyone involved in women's sports space. And we'd love you to join us, whatever your sport, whatever your level and whatever your role. So welcome to my October guest host slot. And this month, I'd like to talk about a topic that is really important to me. Two teams, two games, one club. We're talking about the the men's team, the women's team, and how both are part of something bigger, the club. As we get into the heart of the season, it seems the perfect time to bring this conversation to the table. I recently attended the Data Talks Revenue Conference, where this was discussed predominantly in the world of football. And one thing that came across loud and clear is the importance of inclusivity and parity becoming part of the very DNA of a club. Now, that doesn't mean everything has to be the same for each team. In fact, it absolutely shouldn't be, but it does have to be equal. And it needs to run through players, managers, Coaches, kit, scheduling, match location, funding, merch, season tickets and hospitality provision on match days and more. So let's tackle some of these areas one by one, starting with the players. Every team has its superstars, the high scorers, the midfield maestros and the inspirational goalies. Just think of Mary Earps in the England Lionesses. The men's game in many sports has players with bigger contracts and high media profiles, but the women's game is growing fast. Just look at the popularity in women's football across the world. These women are becoming aspirational role models for boys and girls. However, the men's team has decades of sponsorship, media and fans behind it that has brought it to where it is today. Even non-sports fans, if you ask them about an iconic moment, are likely to cite a big men's moment, perhaps when Nadal beat Federer at Wimbledon, Maradona's Hand of God, or Bolt's epic Olympic wins. The women are still fighting to achieve that level of visibility, resource, funding and fandom. It's coming, but the playing field is still far from level. And they're doing it with resilience and with determination. And watching the women's game as it develops can feel as though you're part of something revolutionary. It's not just a game. It's a movement. It's a movement towards equality, opportunity and a whole new chapter in women's sport. Now let's look at merch. I mentioned Mary Earps above. And there was uproar when Nike originally failed to produce a replica of her Women's World Cup jersey for fans. It was a massive home goal, if you'll excuse the pun, and attracted substantial criticism from Earps herself, the former England men's goalie David Seaman, commentators, players and fans. In short, it mattered. So, if you follow a big team, have you noticed a shift in the club merch shops? Can you purchase women's kits with player names on the back? When children and young players and families walk into the shop and see men's and women's jerseys hanging side by side, side, it speaks volumes about both teams holding their place in the club and for the badge. And it's not just about the shirts. It's about creating a culture where young fans have someone to look up to, be that the men's star striker or the women's inspiring captain. And it's high time we had both. Now let's look at managers and coaches. And this is something I touched on in my last episode. Often the women's game requires a different approach and has different playing styles. The overall objectives and challenges are the same. Managing personalities, building team cohesion and developing set plays that bring out each player's strengths but it's categorically not the same job. 
coaches on the women's side navigate a different set of challenges, perhaps the physicality of a game or the psychology of managing a team that does not necessarily have access to the same resources, pitches, funding and profile as its male counterparts. But the players, they are the heart and soul of the club. And these athletes are the role models for the next generation. And they're breaking down barriers in their own ways. The men's team often carries the weight of history and expectation, while the women's team is still fighting for equality and visibility. Both challenges are difficult in their own right, but together they represent the future of the sport. It takes a very skilled manager to coach both the men and the women successfully, but whether this is one person or separate coaches for each side, They are united in pursuit of overall success for the club. And that's what makes it powerful. Two different teams, two styles of play, one club. Now, let's dive into facilities. A long held bone of contention. For a long time, the men's and women's teams were often separated in terms of training grounds, changing rooms and even medical support. The men have access to state-of-the-art training centres, while the women have to make do with much less. But that's changing. Clubs that are serious about being one unified entity are investing in equal or at least improved facilities for both teams. Trust me, as someone who's been there, women don't want to make do with going into the men's changing facilities or play on the out-of-town, high-on-a-windy hill, second or third grade pitch for matches because the men are playing today. And let's not forget the importance of visibility here. When the women's team has access to top-tier training grounds, it sends a signal to everyone, from young players to potential recruits, that the club values their development just as much as the men's. It's about creating a professional environment where both teams can thrive. So now let's move to the fans. So whether you're cheering for the men's team on Saturday or backing the women's squad on Sunday, we all wear the same badge. That's what brings us together. But, and here's where it gets interesting, it's not like we're watching the exact same sport when we're switching between the men's and the women's matches. There are differences in how the games are played But does that change the passion or the pride we feel as supporters? Absolutely not. Think about match day. The atmosphere around the stadium, whether it's 20,000 fans or more showing up for the men, or a smaller yet equally loyal and passionate crowd cheering on the women. It's electric either way. In fact, one of the most beautiful things about supporting both teams is that you see the evolution of the club's culture. Clubs are starting to recognise this, and rather than only trying to attract a whole new audience for the newer teams, they are successfully marketing the women's game to their men's fan base as well, and some are offering super season tickets for both sides. And for revenue generation, that can only be good news. Fans can play a major role in the success of their club by supporting both teams in a way that honours their differences but unites them under one badge. And the way to achieve this is pretty simple. Inclusivity. We need to keep pushing for equal treatment and visibility for the women's team while celebrating the legacy of the men's side. It's not about comparing them. It's about enabling both for the wind. And remember, a rising tide lifts all ships. Inclusivity doesn't mean we have to pretend there aren't differences between the men's and women's teams. We celebrate those differences, but we also make sure that both teams have equal opportunities to succeed. That means better scheduling, equal access to facilities and a commitment to representing both sides equally in the club shop, in the media, on the pitch and in our marketing. At the end of the day, the beauty of supporting a club is that we don't have to choose. We get to support two or more amazing teams who are both striving for greatness in their own way. Two teams, two games, one club. So that's a wrap for this month. I'm Karen, the founder and skipper of Sporting Shearers, 
guest hosting this podcast for Data Talks. Come and connect with me and the awesome Data Talks team on social media. And don't forget to join our fantastic community, Women in Sport, beyond the hashtag. All the links are in the episode description. <laughs>